Hey, welcome and happy new year. Um, my name's Jackie Lewis and I am the clinical nutritionist for BN Multi. And each Tuesday, either myself on my own or a guest, or in this instance, I think there's about 30 guests. So I'm pretty excited about this one. Join here on the BN Multi page and we talk about just current issues relating to post weight loss surgery, your general health, any weird things your body might be doing. Um, we talk about stalls, we talk about nutrition, exercise, um, all those sorts of things. And it's a regular weekly Tuesday at 7 p.m. Brisbane time. So welcome and Happy New Year. I hope everyone had a safe and happy time with family and maybe even a little bit of a holiday. Um, I'm just going to let in all of the guests from the waiting room in our Zoom meeting. Um, we're going to talk tonight about our January challenge. Here comes everyone. <laughs> it's a bit of excitement. Um, welcome. Hi, guys. Hi, Jackie. How are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. It's That's Brenda. Brenda, how are you? bad great there's a whole bunch of you joining so i'll just um work through that lots of people with their mics off which is fine because i know it's a busy time in the house uh around this time of night i've just kicked everybody out downstairs <laughs> so happy new year firstly and uh looks like everyone's pretty keen for a reset get 2021 underway um with our health as a main priority, which is fantastic. So tonight we're going to discuss a few different things. Um, one of them, the main one is the January challenge. So I'll give you a bit of insight into what our plans are for this year to help you keep on track and to create a group feel and to provide a place of support and um, education and motivation. So this year, each month, we have a different health related challenge. I'm not going to disclose what they are. Um, this month, obviously, is chopping out sugar from different um, sneaky places in the diet. So we'll talk about that. Um, coming up, we have, and of course, with the world being the way it is at the moment, we've had a bit of a delay in our um, delivery. So there's a, I'm just going to let this person in, sorry. And there is a new calendar, which we've done. It's like a desktop flip calendar. And it's obviously got the month of days on it, but each month has motivational topics and the monthly challenge. So you'll be able to pop it on your desk or on your kitchen bench or wherever you are on a regular basis and refer to that as a way of keeping um, what we're aiming at top of mind for the month. And then everything we do in the group will be linked to that challenge as well. Um, we're toying with the idea and I'd like to get your feedback in the comments on this one. We're toying with the idea of creating some small groups of say 10 of you um, who stick together within our group as a it's like a subgroup um, and we can set it all up so that you've got people who are on the same journey with you and are working on the same challenge as you. And you guys can then communicate throughout the month of what you find is working for you or what you're struggling with. And then we can all talk about it um, on a more regular basis. And we're just wondering if that's something that is what you're looking for firstly. Um, so if you can pop in the chat just your thoughts on, you know, how much support you're looking for and whether you'd like to team up with um, some of the BN family from the group and, um, you know, support each other in that way along the, along the journey. Um, so it's an idea and um, I think it's a great way of meeting people who are on the same journey and also... Um, here comes Katrina. Welcome, Katrina. And uh, also, you know, finding 
everyone's got their own understanding and their own hi <laughs> and their own experience and knowledge and we can all pull that together and hopefully fast track it all for you so without further ado um i just want to pop into the um so yeah give me your thoughts on that i can't see the chat i've got too many screens in the way here it is um Oh, that's great. Um, so anyone who's interested in finding themselves a, a small support group within our BN Bariatric Group can just email us also support at BN Multi and we'll see how many of you there are and um, pop something together and connect you all up somehow. Another thing I'd like you to pop in the chat is where are you situated so we can get an idea of um, where everybody is. Okay. Homework. Oh, Can't have me sitting here doing all the work for you. So I'm in Brisbane. Is anyone else in Brisbane? It's going... Chat. <laughs> Uh, in Brisbane. Yeah, great. Grafton, Brisbane. God, it was hot here today. It was nice to be inside. It was, I think it was about 34 at one stage when I got in the car. And then it was like 32 and bucketing down rain. And that was another special event. We've had lots of water and lots of humidity up this way. Melbourne. I grew up in Melbourne, Katrina. All the lovely people come from down there. <laughs> <laughs> I've done... Melbourne, Sydney, and now Queensland. I think I'll stay here. <laughs> Safest place at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what a world. And so thank you for letting me know where you are. Also, let me know um, where sugar is sneaking in to your diet and um, what you think about that. And I'll give you a bit of a background also this week in our newsletter there's an article i've written which talks about um you know the usual mathematics of weight loss and how a lot of the opinion is that weight loss comes about when calories in equals more than sorry calories in is less than calories out and that equates to weight loss and we're talking about calories and isn't a calorie just a calorie and a bit of a mystery around um, why calories come from all foods but why certain calories will be better ones to have in your diet than others so a quick glimpse at that is also around sugar so refined sugar um, <clears throat> uh, refined sugar its job is basically um, it goes into your body through your food and it goes into your digestive tract. And the first thing it does is um, it's turned into glucose. And glucose is, we need it. It keeps our brain functioning and it has a whole lot of other um, benefits to our body. Dogs. I keep the dogs out too. And um, also um, sugar, we need it. But there's different forms of it. So we talk about carbohydrate, which is sugar, and we talk about complex carbohydrates and simple carbs. And so most of us would be aware of the recommendation to try and steer away from simple carbohydrates like refined sugars and um, is anyone else in the waiting room? I've got to keep an eye on that. Refined sugars, um, so flour, um, white flour, white pasta, white rice, those sorts of things. Thanks for answering, guys. I'll come back to that question in a minute. But if you can pop in where sugar is sneaking into your diet um, and we can discuss it as we go along. Um, but what I wanted to talk about is how sugar works in the body and what it does. So initially it goes in and it's an energy molecule, basically. Its job is to produce energy for your muscles to work. Um, any excess that's not used up um, in, say, a period of 72 hours 
is um, stored in the liver and the muscles as a ready source of energy, which is called glycogen. And it's great because it also will get us through a gym workout and keep us going through the day and that sort of thing. What happens is if that energy is not used up, there's another process that kicks in and it's called lipolysis. So um, it's actually called lipogenesis. Anything that's growing is called genesis. Anything that is shrinking is called it's called lysis. So it's shrinking and um, almost, you know, dying or, or becoming smaller. So um, lipogenesis is lipo, which is fat, and genesis is growth. So that extra energy that's stored in the muscles in the liver is then just hanging around. So the body thinks, well, I'll keep that as a store because maybe I'll run out later on. And that's what fat is. So sugar is um, two things, particularly refined sugars. Um, one, it's a very quick source of energy. So if it's not used up quickly, it's also stored very quickly. Secondly, it's highly inflammatory. So the process of obesity is essentially um, not someone else coming in, Leanne. And um, welcome, Leanne. Thanks for joining us. I'm just babbling about sugar and what it's doing to our bodies. So um, sugar, white sugar, um, white bread, that sort of stuff. If you're looking at sprinting or doing something that's quite intense and you need a quick hit of energy, you'd look at a simple form of carbohydrate like, um, you know, sugar, lollies, quick hit chocolate, that sort of stuff. Um, however, if you're wanting to do a marathon, you're looking at slow release carbohydrates, which are your more complex forms like, um, you know, multi-grain breads and um, vegetables, those sorts of things that take a lot longer for the body to break down into glucose and um, give you a bit more bang for your buck. The one thing that sugar or refined sugars do is peak your blood sugar levels. So say you get up in the morning and you have a white piece of bread. No one will do this. No one, of course, would do this. Um, a white piece of bread with some jam on it. It's a massive quick hit of um, ready-to-go carbohydrate energy, which is great if you're, you know, going sprinting or you're out for a big ride or something like that that's quite athletic. You'll use that energy up and that will get you through your workout. However, if you're just going to the office... <laughs> and you're gonna sit down, it's probably not as good. Um, so the job of that sugar is it will spike your blood glucose levels. And when blood glucose is high, the body needs to manage this um, pretty quickly. And what it does is releases insulin. So I'm sure you've all heard of insulin, um, insulin dependent diabetes, insulin resistance, which is type two diabetes. Um, and um, also um, basically what you want to do is make sure your blood sugars are at an even keel so you're not relying on insulin to manage this peaks and troughs in your blood glucose levels on a regular basis. Um, the reason for that is, is that I'll say this a couple of times, in the presence of insulin, fat cannot be used as energy. So when you've got a high blood sugar level and you've got high levels of insulin trying to manage that, your fat loss is going to be much, much slower. And in fact, you can, come, you can become insulin resistant, which means that fat loss is almost impossible. And you can also become um, what we call lipase resistant, which is another um, hormone that's used in the body to help with lipase. So lipase um, helping with fat loss. So when that gridlock is happening because there's been this constant influx of um, slow, uh, of high uh, glycemic index carbohydrates, this is where we get into the cycle of my calories out is exceeding my calories in and I'm still not losing weight. And this is why um, this metabolic surgery has been such a success because this will help to re revise that for you and reverse it pretty quickly. So um, 
I'll get to you in a moment, Leanne. I won't be long. Uh, so here is why we look at reducing sugar, increasing your complex carbohydrates and increasing your protein because protein also has a whole lot of effects on your system which will manage your blood glucose levels and keep them even and keep them quite low. Um, so it's another reason that the high-protein diet exists. Uh, so that's the rundown. I'll, there's more information in the news this week on all of that. It's a really good article on it. Um, but it's, yeah, January and it's a good time to start with a reset. And I don't know if you saw my images in the group on the weekend of um, clearing out the fridge, <laughs> cleansing out the Christmas stuff and um, replenishing it with uh, food that's going to help our family to thrive this year as well. So it's a lot about keeping organised and it's a lot about having a look at what's on your food labels and um, and being kind of worded up on what's going on. So I'm going to see what Leanne's going to say. Hi, Leanne, can you hear me? Hello. Leanne, I think you had a question. No, maybe not. Had your hand up, that's all. Sorry. Um, has anyone got a pressing question they'd like to ask first up? You can just unmute and we'll work it out from there. You're all very quiet. That's okay. Um, oh, Hi, one. Jackie. Oh, Brenda, great. Yep, just me. Um, I have an, an issue and I've had it, I'm 13 months um, post-op bypass. Yeah. And I've been suffering a lot with um, trying to find foods that work and obviously with, and everyone will have this issue as well with diarrhoea um, really badly and that sort of stuff. And I haven't been able to identify what is right and what's wrong or anything like that. And I've been trying to do Benefiber and that sort of stuff, and that's not working. Yeah. So I just didn't know whether the product that you guys have, which is I think it's called Gut Health. Yeah. There's one that's, that's called Motion Potion. Have you seen that one? No, not really, it's, no. There's two we stock. One is our own fibre, which is obviously very good. Um, the other one, for that kind of loose stool and the unknown um, reasoning behind it there's another product we have on the store which is called motion potion and um, it's all about keeping things in motion so it's yep. lots of fiber but it's also got some great stuff in it if there's any inflammation in there or any foods that you're reacting to it can kind of quell that um, reaction to some extent it'll boost up your good microbes in the gut and kind of calm things down a little bit is it a continual um is there always diarrhea? Do you mind me asking? Yeah, it is. It's, it's um, I mean, obviously food's got to have some impact on it, obviously. And um, there was a, a, a time there I was trying red meats, but they're too fatty for me. So I've cut the red meats out. Mm. Um, I, I can't process any type of salads at all. Mm. They just don't work at all. It's just yeah. nasty. Um, yeah. And, and also for me, it's been, COVID has been a, a blessing for me. Because because of the diarrhea and the wind, yeah. Um, if I if I had to be at work with this situation, I would not be there at all. Wow. Because the, I I just couldn't do it. Yeah. And I we've I've been tested with the doctors and that sort of stuff. Everything seems to be fine based on what all my bloods and everything like that. That's all fine. Yeah. I mean, obviously I'm, I'm malnutrition, and what's happening now is and that's that not absorbing I've, anything. Yeah, and I've yeah. lost all muscle. Yeah. So there'd be, pro it sounds to me, and I'm not diagnosing, but it would be worth yep. exploring um, your enzymatic activity um, and looking at, um, you know, what your digestive enzymes are doing and the pancreas is doing that's going yeah. to be helping with that. Also looking at um, your um, hydrochloric acid, like the level of stomach acid, because a lot of that is, low so there'll be some people have reflux and as a result they think that there's lots of acid but it can also be that there's not enough and that the food will just sit there and not get broken down very well so then it's sitting in the tummy and it's refluxing back up again um in the 
In the stool, you might find if it's a loose stool all the time, you might find undigested particles of food as well, which would indicate that it's not being broken down by the enzymes or the acid. Yep. Um, one thing I'd suggest is looking at um, either like a stool analysis. Um, they do what's called a CDSA test and they'll yep. have a look at like what your bacterial load is, what there is a lot of, what there's not enough of. And mm -hmm. then they can sort of more um, definitively come up with probiotics to help because there's definitely certain strains you need more of than less and that could be a way of balancing it out. Um but yeah, looking at it from that kind of perspective, it's like it's either a malabsorptive or almost like a dumping, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's what I was sort of thinking. It's 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 like a dumping, but without the the sweating or, or anything mm. like that. Um, they've given me Creon to take, um, so I'm only take. I was up to ten yeah. tablets every time. What do you have? Wow. Smells like. But now it's it's um, the next step. I think is going to be the stool analysis and that sort yeah. of stuff um, because it, I just can't keep going because I've got no energy and and no. I expected to have a lot of energy by now and I've just got nothing. And has it um, always been this way, or did did it start after a particular point in time? And, um, or it started basically from the beginning, I suppose, from when I went when I went from um, being on liquids to being on soft or um, the solid foods more than yeah. anything. Um, I also had trouble with, um, because I wasn't absorbing and I was having, um, my protein levels are very low. Yeah. So I'm on Pepti Pro and that sort of stuff because if I don't have that, then my ankles and stuff all balloon up, which apparently yeah. is all to do with the with the protein as well. So it's yeah. sort of been like a vicious cycle at the moment. Well, it's, it's hard, sort of, yeah. And, yeah, I would say have a look at it from that point of view, like what's going in, what's going on in your gut that's not happy and not balanced and then work yeah. back from there then look at i mean it sounds like every food is doing it but you could look at um like an elimination kind of process where you take out um gluten the first thing we do in this kind of situation for inflammation is take out gluten and dairy and then yeah. have a rest and treat the gut the motion potion a few other different things that we would do from a kind of practitioner perspective and then you test it and see okay. what happens. So you can, um, my recommendation would be to see if you can remove gluten and dairy just for a period of time and just um, see if that makes any difference. But certainly um, if you want any more support in that regard, let us know, just send us an email. Um, dietitian is very helpful. Yep. You may need someone who's more like nutritional medicine or that kind of vein where we're looking at systems that are not working and supporting those systems as well. Yeah, well, I see the bariatric dietitian yeah. that we have down here and that sort of stuff. And, yeah, I'm, I'm already basically dairy-free and gluten-free, not yeah. fully, but basically. Yeah. Because um, I do know that it's playing up. But, yeah, anyway, thank you for thank those Thank you. Ideas. Yeah, I hope that and it helps everyone because I think it's a very common um, situation, not an ongoing yeah. one, but um, certainly looking at then the nutrients that you're not absorbing and making sure you're supporting with good supplementation every day in, in the meantime, but um, yep. sooner rather than later would be good. Yep. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Um, and um, we're having a look at where sugar's sneaking in. Um, you can probably see the answers here. Low fat custard and frosty fruit, icy poles. Yum. Um, and looking at alternatives, you can make your own that's not so, then you know at least what you're putting in there. Um, on the site at the moment, we've got these new silicon, um, almost like a frosty fruit, uh, not a frosty fruit, you know, the Calippo Icy Pole. They're that cone shape um, ice cream mould. So you can make your own, um, whip up some yogurt, um, tasteless protein powder, berries, a little bit of honey and freeze those and there's your alternative to the frosty fruit. So there's heaps of things you can do and kind of that's where our range is going is looking at storage of food and different ways of making, um, you know, nice things that are still, you know, what's gone into them and that are going to keep you healthy. So looking at low fat custard, um, kicked, I've kicked sugar from my coffee altogether last year. I had no sugar in my coffee today and I thought it would be horrible and it wasn't too bad. <laughs> um, then um, 
For me at the moment, I've been having fruit with lactose-free ice cream, which is good. Um, and then also if that's, you know, if you are looking at eliminating that lactose-free ice cream, um, you might look at adding some yogurt and some berries or something like that that gives you that same kind of experience that we're looking for um, without the refined sugars in it as well. Um, Ale says wine, peanut butter and an awful lot of non-whole foods in the diet. Peanut butter, uh, I like it because it um, fills me up and it's a good source of protein, but I buy... Um, I think it's PIX, P-I-X, or there's a few other brands that are pretty much just peanuts um, and the kids won't eat it, which is great. So I've got my own peanut butter jar at home now. <laughs> um, but those sorts of things that we've become really used to lots of different brands that we pick up on the supermarket shelf, which are laced with lots of sugar and a lot of um, different kind of technologies that make things feel nice. So we're being sold to in a way because um, there's a lot of stuff that's going into food technology to keep us wanting more of their product. So when you're aware of that, you can kind of wean yourself off because you know that you're being played, <laughs> in my opinion, um, and just have a look at the different brands that are on offer. So if I'm buying peanut butter, I don't go to the spreads aisle i go to the health food aisle and have a look there um and then just play around with the one the pix one is like roasted peanuts and it's got a really rich taste to it without all the sugar and it's basically just peanuts um and yeah having a look at the removal of non-whole foods and what why they are making you feel happy at the time and what other things you might do in their place. And I think I posted in the group today about, you know, we can't just rip all these things out um, that give us pleasure because we also have an innate need for that sweet taste. I mean, the, it's a it's a range of tastes that our body looks for and there's things that we need to get from our diet and sweet is one of them, but it's like how much of it and um, where is it coming from? So 30, 40 years ago when grandma was cooking, we had stewed apple and cinnamon and some vanilla and maybe a little bit of brown sugar. Um, but I look at that and from a gut health perspective, they're talking about stewed apple being one of the best things you could ever do for your health. Um, it's got a lot of pectin in it and the fibres in the apple are really healing for the gut. So you could start your day and it's beautiful with um just plain yogurt with your own stewed apple mixed into it, which sweetens things up. So stewing things really does sweeten up your food. Um, stewed peaches are beautiful with um, just buy some nice um, vanilla essence, the thickest one you can find. And now that you don't eat a lot, you can go with the quality because you know that it will last you because you don't use that much of it. So you could make a batch of stewed peaches and add those into your brekkie with some yogurt and like hemp seeds or something like that. And it does become, as you change your palate and your tastes, and I did say that in the group, it's only a three-week process, so hang in there. Um, those sorts of things will become your indulgence. And I know for some of you it's like that would never be an indulgence, but there's things that I just love, like raspberries at the moment are in a really beautiful time of the season and to me they're um, a bit of an indulgence because they're never that cheap but um, they do so many good things for you I go to Costco and buy the big I think it's almost a two kilo bag of mixed berries and I mean that's so much cheaper than buying fresh and then you can keep them um, for as long as you need them pop a cup of them in a smoothie and they're rich in antioxidants and they bring in that sweetness without all the calories so you know, you can snack on a whole big punnet of, of berries. Um, it doesn't even have 100 calories in it. It's almost free. Um, so those sorts of things. Um, and having a look at, oh, yeah, Pix. Yes, it, the Pix peanut butter is the one with the red writing on the jar. Yeah. Um, and it's quite nice. It is quite nice. I'm going to make sure there's no one stuck up in the waiting room, which is good. Does anyone have any other questions about what our goals are this month? 
reset, kick up the, it's just nice to um, have a common goal, I think. And what I'll do is tie that into most of the things we do during the week. Um, so places to look at um, these refined sugars or things that impact your insulin are also wine. Um, <laughs> so even when you're making a choice, if you are drinking wine, choose a red wine over a white wine or a rosé, which is very fashionable at the moment, but I don't like it. Um, red wine has some antioxidants in it. And the this, this studies show that the 120 mil glass has quite a medicinal benefit. I mean, you could get the same benefit from food. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying wine is the only place to get your antioxidants from and your resveratrol and that sort of thing. Um, but it's how you eat and why. So I, if I'm going to drink, I'll have red wine um, because white wine is too high in sugar um, and it gives you that sweet. So then everything you want after that is sweet. Alcohol will also increase your appetite. So then you make, you're relaxed, <laughs> you start to make poor food choices and you're more hungry. Um, and the next day I find this very, um, because alcohol also dysregulates your blood sugars. So you find that you'll often go out for a meal, have a few glasses of wine and you've had, you know, more than you usually would have to eat and also to drink. And then you wake up hungry and that's alcohol talking to you. <laughs> it stuffs up your sleep and it helps you to crave carbohydrates. Um, so I know January is a great month to talk about eliminating alcohol um, and at least regulating it to once or twice a week um, if it floats your boat still. Um, and I think they do Feb fast as well. So everyone goes, no, nah, that's it, January, I'm giving it up. And then they leverage that and um, continue it on. There's another um, Facebook community that are, I think it's a 28 day challenge. You can do 28 days, you could do two months, you can do six months or 12 eliminating alcohol. It's a whole support program. So if anyone's interested in that, I'll, um, I'll try and find it because it looks quite good and I just can't remember the name of it. Um, what else are we doing tonight? We had a couple of questions. Um, has anyone got anything else they want to say about sugar? You can just unmute and have a chat. That's okay. Um, um, Katrina is asking, hi, I'm on, I'm post-op four weeks gastric sleeve surgery and I'm still on liquid stage. Is this normal? And how much weight should you lose in the first month? Um, normal, well, normal is your normal. And I think that's something to really get acquainted with is that it's, um, your normal might be norm, not someone else's normal. So there's a generally a reason why your practitioners will be prescribing your care in the way that they are. Um, so I can't really comment on why you would still be on liquids in a four-week stage. Um, um, it would be something for your practitioner or your surgeon to have decided. Um, often there's a two, two, and two. It's like two weeks post pre-op, two weeks liquid two weeks soft food, then starting on solids or soft foods and purees and then solids. Um, and that is common, um, but everyone's different. So there might be a reason they've recommended that. And also um, looking at what's normal as far as weight loss in the first month, there is also no normal. <laughs> um, because again, you might be someone who holds on to a lot of fluid as an inflammatory response, which would then indicate less loss on the scales. Um, and I know, and also um, another article I've written this week for something we're doing is about weight loss, not um, like weight on the scales and what that means as compared to your composition. So if you're looking at um, how much you weigh, so before surgery, say you weighed 150 kilos and four weeks after surgery, you weigh 145 kilos. You could say that's five kilos of loss, but it could also be um, what are you losing? So you also need to know what's coming off because um, key 
to your success is that you try not to lose muscle in this fast weight loss um, period. And that's done by making sure you're reaching your protein needs and um, getting up and moving when they've indicated that exercise is safe for you. Because um, if you're not eating enough calories and you're not exercising, you can go into um, losing muscle and conserving fat. So then you are losing weight on the scale and you might go, yay, I'm losing weight, but it could be the wrong thing that you're losing. So it's looking at um, asking about your composition. A lot of the clinics will have what we call the BIA scale, you know, the one you step on and you've got the scan. And we've got those on the site. Um, and that's a great reference point to make sure your progress is um, understood as far as what your composition is. So it'll measure your um, muscle levels, your water level, your fat percentage um, and your weight. So then you've got this broader understanding of what you're actually made up of. Also take your measurements. So um, yes, we're having weight loss surgery and I think we get a bit hung up on the weight loss, not um, fat loss or um you know, reducing your BMI and that sort of stuff. So it's not so much getting on the scales every day and going what's happening, um, which I know is very tempting and very frustrating if it's not moving in the right direction. But there's different reasons that that might be happening. And it could be that dehydration um, will also make you store water. So if you're not drinking enough water, your body will start to conserve it and store it in the body. Um, or it could be inflammation. You're recovering from surgery and there's an inflammatory response and a recovery period. Um, and I also encourage people not to expect too much of themselves in that early um, stage because there's um, certainly a lot of work going on and a reset of your endocrine system and all sorts of different things are happening. Um, and I think because it's keyhole surgery, it doesn't look like much. So we kind of keep, expect to keep on going, but you've really, particularly with bypass, um, both of the surgeries are a huge intervention and um, I think they need to be respected for that as well. Um, and we know that it's just a marathon, not a race. So um, hang in there, but yeah, monitor your weight and your progress from a kind of a broader perspective than just on the scales. Um, thank you. And let me see. Um, so I've talked about wine, talked about peanut butter. All the good things have been discussed. Um, and Maver's peanut butter is good. They do a good um, mixed nut butter, which has got um, extra protein in it. It's it's not peanut butter. Oh, well, I'll absolutely say it's not. But it's nice um, to put it in a smoothie if you want to thicken it up a little bit and give it a bit more body. Um, and uh, it's got almonds. There's other ones like the ABC, Arnott's, um, Almonds, Brazil nuts and cashews, that's really nice. Just nuts in general are really good for you and they've got, they'll fill you up. They, they can be high in calories, so you have to watch how much of it you take, but they've also got really good fats in them that are great for your skin and your hair and all that sort of thing as well. So I think they've got a lot going for them in between meals. Um, also, Leanne wants to know what milk do we use in smoothies and that's dependent Um about two months ago, I would have said I use full cream dairy milk and I love it. Um, and for my own different reasons, I've now removed dairy from my resume of food. Um, and so I use soy and soy is good. I need, I usually use a bond soy. There's a reason that looking at your soy milks and how they're processed and what's added to them and how much sugar and all that sort of stuff. Um, you need to be aware of that when you're taking out dairy, which is great for, um, it's got a good mineral profile with calcium and that sort of thing, but it's also um, um, got a lot of protein in it. And it's, it, I mean, a lot of people say that cows should eat, should drink dairy milk. And um, until now I've been a bit of an advocate for dairy because I love it. <laughs> um, but check what you're drinking if you're replacing dairy. Be a bit fussy about the milks that you use. Um, I find almond milk, when you look at the pack, it's got like 2% almonds in it and I don't know what the rest of it is. It's just water and a bit of sugar in a lot of cases. You can make your own. Um, 
technique. I looked at this nut milk making machine. It was like, I don't know, it looked really good, but I think it was about seven or 800 bucks. And I thought, oh, I think I'll just buy my own. Um, so I use soy at the moment and I enjoy that. Um, and at our later age for women, sort of after your mid forties, adding some soy products into your diet is not a bad thing because it'll help with um, bringing in some plant-based estrogens. Soy milk's not the best place for that though. Tempeh and tofu are. And as you're reaching towards kind of perimenopause and menopause, they're a great addition to your diet. Um, it, um, also the edamame beans, which I buy also at Costco in a big two kilo pack and you just defrost them. And we use them as a starter when we have guests or if we've got, you know, half an hour spare, I'll eat a few edamame beans. Um, so those sorts of things are great little um, feeling healthy addition. Um, and often I'll put just a little bit of soy, um, not soy, sesame oil and a little bit of, say, oyster sauce or fish sauce on top of them, and it just gives them a little bit more of flavour. Um, so milk is up to you. Um, I look at good quality milk. And don't be fooled that just because it's in the fridge in the supermarket that it's better quality than something that's on the shelf because a lot of those milks will survive on the shelf. It's just a bit of a play. And the dairy corporation are actually trying to get them kicked out of the supermarket fridge because they say they're not milk. Um, so that's also where you look at the uh, monopoly over our food and what's in it and who's got control of it. Um, so I use soy milk. I also now will, because I'm trying to avoid the dairy, I'll use coconut water. So coconut water, two scoops of tasteless protein. I put this in the group on the weekend, two scoops of my greens powder, berries, a little bit of honey, uh, maybe some hemp seeds. And it's, I just love that because it's also quite hydrating and it's fresh. Um, and again, make sure you just get pure coconut water, nothing added to it because then your sugar content will go up. It does have a little bit of the um, natural sugars in it anyway, but it's quite a good electrolyte balancer as well. And Melissa is saying, and this is something to bring up in the group, there was a mention um, during the week of someone who had really sore hips. Um, and after surgery, the effects on your bone density um, and your calcium absorption in particular um, should be monitored. And Melissa was just saying she had a DEXA scan in um, November, which was helpful. DEXA is great because it's non-invasive um, and it measures your bone density, but it'll also show your fat content and the distribution of the fat. So um, I'm now linking that back to what I was saying about body composition. Um, and I think particularly for women, um, but also for men who've had weight loss surgery where calcium absorption is affected, you'd be wise to explore getting a DEXA scan, which is a bone density and um, it'll show your body fat cut, um, distribution as well as a baseline. Um, so you know what your bones are doing at the moment. And then maybe every 18 months to two years have that done again and just compare to make sure that you're not losing bone minerals hand over fist because it can happen um i think the calcium absorption after surgery can be as low as about seven or eight percent and before surgery it's about 40 so um we the guidelines for nutrition um the guidelines for calcium are um i think between 1300 milligrams a day up to two and a half thousand depending on um your age and your sex and your family history. So generally your um, dietitian will work all that out for you as well. And um, I hope that's helpful. Does anyone have any other questions? My bones and muscles weigh 60 kilos, currently sitting on 80 kilos. So me wanting to lose another, no, 10 kilos is not realistic. No, because we do need some fat, <laughs> believe it or not. Fat um, helps to protect our organs from hitting into things and um it's also um we have tiny little fat pads all through the soles of our feet which protect our bones as well from hitting the floor when we're walking and i know when i was very young and i was very very fit and i remember my feet would hurt because i had no i'd lost some of the fat out of my feet even um so it's 
making things realistic and absolutely um, that's where a DEXA scan would come in to show you kind of what the ideal distribution would be and where it is. Um, and also different fat has different risks. So at, um, abdominal, what we call abdominal adiposity is um, fat obviously that we carry around the abdomen and that's where men will store their fat because it's more freely um released into the bloodstream when we need energy so it goes back to hunter gatherer times when the men might be out hunting for a week at a time without food and they'd have this little pouch in their tummy um, that would help to keep them going when there was times of starvation um, so their men's abdominal fat is more of a cardiac risk than the women's kind of more estrogenic fat which is tucked around the hips um, and locked away um, <laughs> So you'll notice that men do lose fat um, more readily than women because that's just the way they're geared, whereas women are geared to hang on to it because our job is to keep the um, human race alive and reproduce. And that fat around your hips is the um, helps with the production of um, lots of different things that link to your fertility as well. Ail would like to ask me, yes, of course, um, just um, I'll send an email to the support at bnmulti.com um, email address, Ail, and I'll catch up with you about that. Water is a big one and the most common reason for re-hospitalisation after surgery is dehydration and electrolyte imbalance um, as well as um niacin deficiency um, so that's if you've had a lot of vomiting it's something to really be aware of that if your niacin gets low it can be a little bit dangerous so always if you ever have even gastro or something like that and there's you know persistent vomiting or diarrhea same as in um, Brenda's case um, looking at your electrolytes and the loss of the nutrients that you need from that is key um so yes so this month um what i want to say before i go is i mentioned at the start of the session um about us putting together some small groups within yourselves within our group which would um help you to connect with others who are on the same journey and to help to get through this year of all of our crazy challenges um so if that's something that really appeals to you, um, send an email to support at bnmulti.com um, and just outline that you're keen to connect with others in the group and then I can find you all and pull you together and I can either be a mentor in the top of the group or we can assign someone else who um, is interested in kind of overseeing that and we'll just see what happens. Um, it might be for you and it might not, but it could be, it could be the game changer of that kind of support that um, we're looking for. A lot of people are in our group are based kind of in clusters. Um, obviously, we're Queensland-based, so there seems to be a bit more traction there as well. But um, the world is a very small place these days, you know. So you're very welcome to, um, yeah, we're hoping to provide as much support for you as we possibly can. Um, and I think I might have covered everything. I'm going to keep these next um, lot of challenges as a bit of a secret, but we will announce when the calendars arrive. There's also a book that um, we've produced. It's called um, 15 Things, and um, it's an outline of a whole lot of different ways of also implementing strategies to keep you on the path to success. So they'll be sold either individually or as a bundle. Um, and they won't be expensive, um, but they'll be very helpful. <laughs> and uh, also keep in touch with us if you're looking for recipe ideas or um, support. And one more question from Katrina. Katerina, um, is it normal to feel hungry all the time? You're quite just past, I think I read you were just over four weeks. Um, again, it's what's common and what's not common. Um, again, I would hopefully you're still in touch with your team at this early stage and I would 
take these questions to your practitioner and just, um, I mean, you're still on liquids and that sort of thing and four weeks of that will certainly um, make it challenging to feel energetic um, and also to feel satisfied if you're not taking in that protein with each meal. Um, so perhaps I would guide you towards writing down maybe what you've taken in over the last week, taking it to your dietitian, talking about what you're feeling and how things are progressing for you. Um, because it may be that there's a calorie deficit there that's too large. So when calories are too low or even protein is too low, weight loss will be quite slow because the body will just be in a holding pattern. Um, so it might be worth exploring just what your day of um, sustenance looks like and how that is meeting your needs for nutrition as well. Um, because if you're hungry all the time as well, it may be that they're just not um, substantial enough to keep you full. There's other things that can be going on, um, things like reflux or um, maybe that's probably the main other thing I would look at as well. But these are certainly at this early stage, definitely questions for your team. Um, start with your dietitian and... Um, then if she's sick, she'll rule out anything that's mechanical or structural um, and work with you from a dietary perspective. If she suspects there's something else there, she'll certainly know what that would look like and she'll know to refer you on as, um, and be cared for. So I hope that answers your question. Um, and then I will see. Oh, thank you, Brenda. Um, it's... Um, nice to be able to support you all and I reckon we could probably call it a wrap in the group during the week I'm going to um I'm going to call on those who are taking part in the challenge whether you're here or not to not or not tonight um and just kind of see how things are going and what you're feeling what you will find when you're reducing sugar I forgot to mention this is that it's a good um sugar will feed different bacteria um, and in particular candida and candida can make you hungry because <laughs> it needs to be fed and it will be feeding the cravings so that one's also a good um, if you're hungry all the time you could look at what the we call it um, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO you can have a look at what your bacterial makeup is. Um, if it's high in candida and things that like lots of sugar, um, there will be craving and that sort of thing as well. Um, another thing I think they test for quite a bit is the um, H. pylori, which is Helicobacter pylori. And um, that's a major contributor to overweight and ulcers. Um, so it's a good one to check for if you're finding and they often will do it before your surgery. Some will do it, actually, they remove the stomach and they send it away to be tested for H. pylori and then they'll treat it. It's very prevalent um, um, and it's something that would be great to clean up because it will certainly help with your weight loss as well. Um, so there's a lot of different things we can check for when things aren't going completely to plan. And um, those kind of the gut health perspective is um, a huge one as well. So I think we'll wrap it up. Um, keep your eye on the group and clean out your cupboards. <laughs> Add some berries into your life and kick out the wine. Um, it all sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? So thanks for joining us. And, hey, I like your little clap there, Brenda. And um, please, if you've got any other questions, just post them in the group during the week and we'll chat about them. These lives with all of you on board, we'll do maybe once a month and then um, I'll see if I can get some other exciting guests on as well. And keep an eye on the podcast. Um, we've got some good ones coming up. Uh, who's next? I've lost track. I'm so far ahead of myself, I've lost track. Um, so have a wonderful week and welcome to 2021. Let's see what happens. <laughs> see you next week. How do I?